great. Well, well thanks, everyone. Thanks for allowing us to uh, present today. Uh, I'm the CEO of Exploits Discovery, uh, Jeff Swinoga. Um, my past, uh, well, I guess uh, before joining this company two months ago, I was the uh, national mining leader for Ernst Young Canada. Uh, I was also the, uh, before that, I was the CEO of uh, First Mining Gold. Um, I was also executive at Torex Gold, North American Palladium, Golden Star. Um, I was also at Barrick uh, back in the early 2000s and uh, the CFO of HUD Bay Minerals. So very pleased to be at this company. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the, the Newfoundland Gold Rush first, and then we'll get into exploits discovery. So uh, the Newfoundland Gold Rush uh, basically started about three or four years ago when um, Newfound Gold uh, was exploring, and they, they had this hypothesis that these major deep faults in, in Newfoundland had, had gold, maybe similar to the Fosterville. You know, Fosterville is probably the, arguably the most profitable mine in the world with the high grade that they found in, in the Swan Zone. So um, sure enough, after two years of exploring, they, they hit the Keats Zone. Uh, market cap grew to $1.3 billion, and uh, they, they're doing very well. They found Lotto uh, and others have been exploring the area. Now, around the same time, um, well, actually, probably about a year ago, uh, Exploits Discovery started uh, gathering up all this land and uh, doing the same thing. So, so let me walk you through the story. But the three key things that are, are important to remember is that uh, we've got lots of land. Uh, I believe we have the largest land package in Newfoundland. Uh, it's all around Newfound Gold, uh, again, the first mover advantage. Uh, second is that we've got a great exploration model uh, and team. Uh, we're using everyone from David Groves, who is a 70-year-old researcher uh, with uh, great uh, credibility, uh, Goldspot with their new technology with AI and machine learning. And then we've got great guys on the ground uh, in Gander, Newfoundland, uh, that uh, I had the pleasure to visit many times over the last couple months. Uh, third is um, we've, we've got $13 million in cash. Uh, shares are very liquid, trade about 200 to 300,000 shares per day. Uh, very well supported. Uh, Eric Sprott owns 20% of the company. Uh, and also Newfound Gold owns about 12%. So all great uh, ingredients for a great company to start off with. Uh, just a bit on our capital structure, we've got uh, just over 100 million shares outstanding. Uh, of course, we've got 30 million warrants and uh, about 8 million uh, options. Uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the, the share ch price uh, chart, chart below, uh, above and to the side is that uh, the company started off, it was trading around 40, 50 cents, and then when Eric bought in, it ballooned to about 150, almost 160. Uh, and then Eric bought in again, and then it went up again. So uh, since that time, we've created a very strong base uh, as we started our exploration program, our drilling, and uh, you know, again, we're, we're it's, you know, very attractive at this price uh, as we start uh, embarking upon the, uh, the execution of our exploration program. Um, talked about myself already. Um, we've got a great team. A uh, little bit on David Groves. Again, tremendous individual. I'll probably sp speak to him uh, three times a week. Yeah, he helps to kind of validate some of the things that we see on the ground and with what Goldspot's doing with the new technology. Um, he believes that any geologist uh, over 50 is a good geologist. Uh, so when you, when you have the stars aligned between someone of that uh, seniority who's trained some of the world top geologists uh, and, and to align with Goldspot and the team on the ground, you know you have something really good happening. So real pleasure working with him. Uh, and so just uh, if I step back to last year, you can see and this is amazing how early days this was. If you think about it in the context of the uh, Abitibi camp and how it grew over the last uh, number of decades. But what you see in blue is what Newfound has. And so they had the, the major faults are going through it. I'll go through it in more detail. But blue is where Newfound is, and then we're in red. So we started staking uh, back in September of, of last year. So you go a couple months forward into December. We accumulated more land around uh, Newfound. It started to get a little more crowded as people are, are staking claims. And then you go to uh, June of this year. You can see very busy. Um, <laughs> so lots of property being staked. Um, so you, you can't get what we have now. So it's very strategically positioned. And again, uh, we've got the largest land package uh, uh, in the area. So uh, very, very pleased. Um, it just, uh, just, just a time frame to show that we've started our journey. Uh, which is, uh, I think, joining at this time is, is very exciting uh, based on what has been has done historically. Not much has been, like, if you look at some of the surveys they've done, if you look at some of the companies that have been there over the last couple of decades, uh, really hasn't been a major focus, but now it is. 
Uh, and maybe just stepping back to how all of these faults got created. So you basically have the North American fault and you have, sorry, North American uh, continent, you have the African continent colliding together, uh, creating this induction where one is sliding over the other. Um, and this is how um, large organic uh, gold discoveries are, are typically uh, found, if you look at Australia and other places. So these massive uh, fluid flows are coming up and uh, the pressure and the heat um, creating great things. So you see the, the, the magnitude of this as well. Uh, these faults go all the way from North Carolina to, uh, to Finland. So it's, uh, it's, it's tremendous. And again, so you have these ocean oceanic crusts coming together, folding, pressure coming up. And the, the easy way to think about this is like a snow shovel. So you think about snow being scraped. I'm from Canada, so we use snow, so as an example. So as we, the snow kind of moving over and, and creating these uh, anticlines and, and the uh, fluids coming up. And then these, the, the gold actually is not in the main uh, uh, thrusts that are coming up uh, organically. It's the, uh, the secondary tertiary structures where the pressure is, is reduced, the heat dissipates a bit, and the gold precipitates into these secondary structures. That's where um, we typically see the gold. So uh, this is a slide I, I lifted from uh, 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 David Groves, where in Australia they talk about these massive faults going down uh, 20, 30 kilometers, uh, almost analogous to what we're seeing in Newfoundland, and they call this the fingers of God. So uh, as far as I know, there's been no uh, magnetic telera studies done in Newfoundland. So we're in the early days of looking at this to see whether uh, we can actually find fingers of God in uh, in Newfoundland. And if we do, I mean, it's, uh, we'll find out where the gold is, is more prominent, to be honest. Like, is it on the Appleton? Is it Dog Bay? And others. So uh, it's early days, and we're, we're very excited to help uh, unlock uh, what's, what we have there. So just to orient yourself, you know, that little uh, uh, square is uh, where we are and where Newfound is. And then just a summary of our exploration program. So we've been flying uh, VTEM. We've done almost 18,000 line kilometers. Uh, again, using uh, Goldspot's uh, data, we give, uh, give them all of our data, and uh, we actually had them on the ground about two weeks ago when I was there. So I posted LinkedIn on that if you ever want to see a sort of summary of what, we, what was going on. David Groves also did a, a three-hour presentation on what he, was, uh, um, what he sees. And then also we've done some S SGH uh, sampling, uh, and that was used with great success for, uh, with Great Bear. So we're using all the, the techniques that we can to uh, accelerate our, uh, our discovery. And a little more specifically, I see here are some of the drill targets that we have. So um, the first drill target we have was Schooner. It literally is off, like, off the road. The first drill hole is literally like five feet. So easily accessible. Uh, we haven't got all the assays back for, for Schooner. Uh, then we went to Quinlan Veins. We drilled there, and that's mm -hmm. on the App Appleton Fault. And then we went over to Johnson's Pond, and we drilled there. And then we moved the drill back over to Schooner. So then what we're doing next now is going to Little Joanna. Little Joanna looks very interesting because it's got a major jog, uh, inflection point, and, and it kind of lines up with a lot of the research that we see. And then we're going to tackle the north along the Appleton. We can go to Appleton North. We've got a, a target called Deuter. We've got a target, target called Titan. Um, the key here is that we've got lots of targets. Um, so it's not like we have a, one small postage stamp and we drill that and whether it makes it or not. So we've got numerous targets that we're looking at. Uh, and then uh, next year, probably in the summertime, we'll look at uh, tackling the south, uh, down at True Grit and others. So, um, so that's uh, and maybe just a, a couple quick slides on some of the veining that we see. This is Jonathan Pond. You see the nice quartz vein uh, going through the, the landscape there. Um, let's go. There it is, and it continues all the way through. And if you look off to the right, we've got some great uh, channel sampling. Uh, there we, s we found a boulder called Paul's Boulder, which was had 700 grams per ton of gold. So very, very good stuff that we're seeing at, uh, in Jonathan's Pond. Uh, and then uh, basically just to sum up, uh, this, is, uh, this is the difference. Uh, we're using all the great exploration techniques we can. Uh, we're still embarking upon a journey here, so um, it's going to be great to watch us, to follow us, and, and join us along the, our path. Very well supported, major shareholders. Everyone knows Eric Sprott. Um, David Groves has been instrumental in his research. Our local team uh, is tremendous uh, and very happy to have them. And then also with uh, Goldspot, they're very supportive as well. And Newfound's also a shelter. So anyway, that's me. So thank you very much.